with corporate cars, saving you thousands on luxury European vehicles. Cameron Slater from Whale Oil. Hello, Cameron. Hello, Larry. Josie Pagani is with us. Hello, Josie. Hello. Cameron, issue number one, the government is copping plenty of flack over the sale of 20% of Air New Zealand today ahead of the referendum. I, I, I think um, opponents can hardly s- claim that this wasn't flagged, Cam. Well, it wasn't. It, they can't claim that it wasn't flagged. And also, it's completely ridiculous their arguments that they've come up with, what, what they're really saying is that 73% the current ownership of the government is the right amount of ownership for, for controlling a company, but 53% is the wrong amount. The share price is the highest it's been since the global financial crisis. It's a perfect time to sell. The only problem that I've got is that they aren't dumping the whole lot and getting out of the airline business. J- JC, good time to sell. Uh, shares are high. Good price. Well, I would have thought selling when you've got a high price, selling a publicly owned company or, or at least a 73% owned company like Air New Zealand when the price is high means that you're, you're foregoing even more dividends to uh, the government coffers. And that's the main thing, Larry. I mean, Cam says 20% doesn't make a difference. Well, actually, you're losing 20% of the dividends, so I hope you guys are going to agree to pay more taxes. Well, what about the $400 million that's going to schools and, and hospitals? They say, I mean, you can't have it both ways, Josie. But once those schools and hospitals are built, which is great, what do we do when they need building again? Well, I mean, I mean this, is we... a one-off, this is a one-off solution to a bigger problem. The other thing, though, Larry, is that I reckon... You know, you're selling that 20%. The difference between 73 and 53% government ownership is influence. Because let's assume Singapore Airlines buys up, I don't know, 10% of Air New Zealand. They they're going to want a director on that board. So once you start having different directors on that board, you start having a different kind of company. That would be fantastic if we had a director from Singapore Airlines on the board. It's a highly profitable and successful air, the skill set that Air New Zealand's got. And that's well, when what, we bought that's it. what prompted this all along, is the government refused to do that back in 2000. And one and therefore caused the share price to oh, crash come on, in the Cam. financial Air New Zealand was a basket case in 2001. The government had to step in to stop Singapore Airlines and buying it and Helen taking Clark it away. And was breaking securities uh, law by saying mum and dad investors should hang on. But the other thing is, I mean, you think about it. If Air New Zealand needs to reinvest in, in, in the future because it goes through hard times, and it's been a huge success to date, it hasn't got a cushion anymore, Larry. It hasn't oh, got... Rubbish. It cannot sell any more of it. Whereas in the past, it could have gone down to, say, 60%. It could have given given itself a bit of capital Come to on, reinvest. Come on, Josie, stop running so the Labour Party's stra- standard strap stop. lines. Come they just on. don't stand up to any scrutiny, particularly the one mm. about um, you know, airfares rising as a result of a change in share ownership. That's just farcical. Well, I didn't even mention that. Well, well, that's... Uh, I, uh, yes, somebody... I think may, may, it may have been the Greens, but that's financial illiteracy. The problem there, uh, Josie, is that uh, Labour actually tried to flog off 22.5% to Qantas, uh, so I think it's all a bit rich, and that was in their last term. Well, it, I mean, but the thing is, though, Larry... It, you know, I'm not running any line here. I'm just saying that, that once you sell up to, um, you've only got 53% of government ownership, you do not have a cushion if you need to reinvest. But also, you're losing the stable ownership structure, which I think has helped it in New Zealand in volatile times actually make good long term decisions. Hang on a second, Josie. So, Are you telling me that the New Zealand can't reinvest in, in aircraft like the 787 Dreamliner, like the new 777s that they're bringing online? and the new Airbuses that are replacing the 737s because the government has that extra 20%? No, I'm saying that the drivers will be different depending on who buys that at that that, um, 20% that we're flogging off. Well, it'll be New Zealand institutions, Josie, and probably, you know, funds like KiwiSaver funds. But we'll come back in just a moment. Cameron Slater and Josie Pagani on the huddle. It's now 13 to 6. News Talk ZB, it is now 10 to 6. Remain, uh, remaining moments with Cam Slater and Josie Began. I got to you a bit late uh, tonight, guys. So, Josie, issue number two is to you. Chogam in Sri Lanka has been and gone. Some leaders boycotted the event due to Sri Lanka's human rights record. Was it right for the Prime Minister to go, Josie? Well, he got an elephant. Uh, it's not much to, to um, write home about, though, is it? Um, I don't know. I mean, you, you, I think he's ended up looking a bit cynical because clearly we're lobbying for a, a seat on the Security Council, that's fine, but when even your Tory colleagues, Stephen Harper, Canadian Prime Minister and um, Cameron, British Prime Minister, have either boycotted or are calling for an investigation. I mean, this is a government that, that let's face it, in the last few days of that civil war slaughtered 40,000 civilians. So I think you know, it, it, it's not that we're calling for a trade boycott or even a sports <coughs> boycott, although I know some are, but this was like throwing them a surprise party or something. Cameron? Up. Oh, look, it, it, I, I just 
shudder to think that who can we actually meet in the country, in, in anywhere in the world, if we're going to get upset about how internal policies, particularly from a country that's just emerged from a civil war, we should actually be meeting and greeting them. If we have a look at the case of Fiji, how have sanctions and uh, boycotts gone against them? It hasn't achieved a single thing, and John Key's actually right. As far as the elephant goes, well, Key's just catching up with Banksy. He's had an elephant for a year. But don't you think, Cam, that you've got to draw the line somewhere? Like having Gaddafi as China. chair... Chair of China? the human. Chi- well, yeah, we've got a trade China? deal with China. We've got a trade deal with China. But yeah, I'm saying, so we've got a trade deal with China, things, and they've got a human no, Cam, rights record finish. that's one of the worst drawing in the, the country line, in the world. Drawing the line is things like giving someone like Gaddafi the chair of the Human Rights uh, um, Commission on the on the United Nations, or turning up and throwing these guys a nice sort of you no, know pre-Christmas party. Look, it's okay party. for us to deal with China and Pakistan and Burma and uh, all these other countries that have got a questionable human rights record and all of a sudden we're going to get upset about Sri Lanka? You know, give me a break. We've got to deal with the, live in the, in the world with the rest of these people and if it's okay for us to, to deal with China and give them a free trade agreement, then it's perfectly all right to have a little meeting in Sri Lanka for the he- Commonwealth head of government. Thank you, Cameron. That is Cameron Slater and thank you, Josie Josie Pagani on the Huddle Sport. Next, it's 8 to 6.